sensible question. Um, let us not forget Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan both considered Nelson Mandela to be a terrorist. In fact, he was in prison with a life sentence without parole based on his unwillingness to renounce violence. So, that's, that's the bottom line. Now, yes, there are some differences, and most of the leadership within Palestine does not endorse random violence against Israelis, but there are those elements that have carried out acts which definitely has shocked the conscience of humanity. I, I write that off as a result of the extreme oppression that you have subjected those people to. If the British people were subjected to that kind of occupation, and I can tell you, if the American people were subjected to that type of occupation for that long, the Palestinians would look like kindergartners on a, on a park visit compared to what the Americans would do, guaranteed. So the truth about the Palestinians is that they are extremely patient, extremely reserved, and this never-ending question of where is the Palestinian Gandhi is really, really insulting and really a diversionary tactic because there are so many Palestinian Gandhis out there, they just don't get the PR that any counterpart from Israel might get. There are so many people putting it on the line every single day and on a weekly basis, non-violently protesting, and what happens? They get shot, they get imprisoned, they get maced, they get all sorts of things done to them. That's happening all the time. They are reaching out. You say, what? You know, how are you going to reach? They're reaching out. They're using nonviolent means. I'm going to say probably one of the more controversial things that I'm, 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 I'm going to say publicly, but it's true. The fact is that the Palestinians were dealing with this horrendous occupation for decades, and the world did nothing. Nothing. Maybe a little lip service every now and then. What the so-called suicide bombings did was force the world by shocking the conscience of humanity to pay attention and the Palestinians have paid a huge price for some within their ranks carrying out those tactics definitely but they achieved one thing and it makes me it gives me no satisfaction to say this but in this sick twisted world that we live in you can make comparisons to the Irish as well when the Irish tried dialogue for not even decades, but centuries, with the British, did they get anywhere? No, they got nowhere. Only when people in London started to experience the possibility of a bomb blowing up in London or the UK, did things start to happen. And this is the world we live in, where might makes right, and we reward violence, which is exactly what Israel will get if in fact they achieve the ultimate goal. We will reward the ultimate violence with, a, with an Israeli state built on the back of genocide, ethnic cleansing, and oppression on a gargantuan scale. Violence is the way of the day, as it stands right now. But the people of Palestine, truth be told, are way more patient, way more patient, and way more nonviolent than we would ever be. So we have no right to point the finger at them and say that they're the violent ones. Thank you very much, Ken. Um, just this one thing that uh, which I don't think anyone else did that uh, Jenny said was oh, very nice to understand. Excuse me. Where is the uh, Palestinian Gandhi? Gandhi? He's in prison in Israel. Um, uh, just uh, um, to let you know about that one. Uh, Jenny, would you like to say anything else on, on, uh, on that question? Well, I'd, I'd like to mention... <laughs> I'd like to mention two other names and, and thank you for the, the points that you made and, and you know, thank you for making them so reasonably. Um, Two examples of non-violent demonstration. Rachel Corrie stood in front of a bulldozer that was illegally pulling down somebody's house, which happens all the time. She was killed. She was run over by the bulldozer. Tom Herndon was shot whilst protecting a little child from soldiers who had opened fire on a peaceful demonstration. Um, you know, I just say again, please, please, if you don't believe what we're saying, go and live in the West Bank for two or three weeks. Even if you can't get into Gaza, just go and live in the West Bank, incognito, and observe what's going on, and go to the demonstrations and talk to the people. That's all I ask. Thank you. Uh, 
gentlemen. Uh, look, the issue here is not that the Jews and Arabs, um, uh, you know, were, were at, at one point, you know, have some kind of, of relationship. The, the truth is, of course, the reason we have a problem in this, uh, in this part of the world is not, it's nothing to do with what we would have called indigenous Jews, that is the Jews or Arab Jews, who people used to call them. These are Jewish communities who lived perfectly happy, happily and were in harmony with us and, and, and within other Arab countries. The problem was Zionism and the people who came and took over the Palestine were not indigenous Jews. They were European Jews who had a problem in Europe which they brought with them and tried to solve their problem at the expense of the Palestinian people. That's why there's a problem in that part of the world. So it's nothing to do with Abraham and so on. It's not, really, it's not that. It's a typical foreign um, invasion and occupation. That's what it is. Now, the, the question of the Palestinian refugees, uh, for to, uh, my, our Iraqi friend, first of all, you didn't come to this country. I mean, you came to this country uh, um, having faced problems in your home country um, and, uh, and were given citizenship here. The problem for the Palestinians is completely different. They were expelled. They were given um, room and, and camps and, and places to live in, in the neighboring states. But because they have a political problem, there's a political reason, uh, and that is that they were not allowed back into their original, into their homeland, Therefore, they remained in those camps believing that they, would, that, that they would go home. And really the answer is not to make them citizens of the states they're living in. The answer is to allow them and help them to go home. Uh, thank you very much. Um, either of you would like to say anything on those, uh, on those two points? No, I'd just add to what um, Garda said about the refugees. A couple of years ago, I visited some camps on the borders of Syria and Iraq, which involved a very long drive through the desert, in the desert night, dead of night, I must say. But these were Palestinians who had fled to Baghdad in 1948, had lived there for a while, there'd been some disruption and another influx in 1967. But then when we overthrew, we, whoever we was, um, overthrew Saddam Hussein, the then government of Iraq, the Shia government of Iraq, actually didn't want the Palestinians there and drove them out again. So they were living in refugee camps on the borders of Syria, hoping to get into Syria, who were actually very good to the Palestinian refugees, but as Garda says, they didn't actually want citizenship from Syria. They got everything else. They got rights and they got education, they got health care. But they didn't actually want citizenship because that would have meant they were then Syrians and they couldn't go back. Right. The Israelis have said that I'm a terrorist operative of Hamas, that I was going to Gaza to train a uh, commando group for Hamas. Uh, U.S. politicians have said that I'm linked to Al-Qaeda. And a few of the infiltrators and subverters within this movement, which is rife with infiltrators and subverters, have come out with slanderous accusations, the full intent of which is to try and marginalize one of the warriors who is willing to die for Palestine. My bank account, which I have offered publicly, states how much money I have. It has been said that I have several properties. I've never owned a property in my life. I have about 100 quid in my bank account now, which is about an average balance for me. If there was any evidence of this, which by the way, the police arrested me. Oh, the UK police, the justice keepers of the land. The police arrested me, took nine of my hard drives. I'm answering the question, shut your mouth. I have, I have nine of my hard drives. I had nine of my hard drives, my laptop, and my computer stolen by the police, along with my camera and personal documents. I've got most of that back. If there's anything indicating that I've committed any fraud at all, I would be all too happy for the most fraudulent system that exists in the world to charge me because I will wear it with a badge of honor. 
The major tactic of the Zionists and their collaborators is slander and lies. And that's exactly what and all that is. And I thank, hey, you, hey, I hey, thank hey, you for repeating the slander and the lies. Because the bottom line is, if I wasn't being attacked like that, it would mean I wasn't really doing anything. Okay, thanks. We've heard from you, we know your views, we don't want to hear any more. Ladies and gents, I'm going to move on fairly quickly because I think we've heard enough of the Ken O'Keefe show and the uh, Ken O'Keefe uh, in terror. Okay, Gavin. Yeah, okay, thank you very much for your, your question. I understand exactly where you're coming from. Um, in fact, I, I happen to believe this, this question um, is, is the subject for another complete uh, evening, really. Uh, how, how would the Palestinians be able to return to their homeland? Well, there is only one way, uh, and that is if Zionism ended in, in that part of the world. Because while you have a Zionist state insisting that it has to be Jewish, i.e. it has to have a Jewish majority, and it has the strength to, to do that, you can see that there isn't a way for the Palestinians to return. However, if you want to talk about how that would be, uh, you would have to really talk about uh, this concept of a one-state solution. That is, that you don't have any partition of the land into a Palestinian state and a Jewish state. Secondly, uh, Zionism comes to an end, it would come to an end indeed, if the Palestinians were to return home, because that would be the end of the Jewish majority. And therefore, that is really the only way. And if people want to help the Palestinians, I personally think they need to support this solution. It's the only one that would allow the right of return. And once that were to happen, you know, you would actually, at one stroke, put an end to this um, uh, racist idea that the state has to have a majority of one type of person and not another. And that, I'm afraid, is the only way. Thank you very much. Um, either of the rest of the panel want to come back on that just very quickly, Jenny? Well, I think the problem with that, Garda, is I think you used the phrase getting rid of the Zionists, or the Zionists must go, and that is the difficulty because they do see, feel so passionately about their position. But as I said in my opening remarks, um, beware Israel. Um, Israel is not going to be there forever in its present performance because one day the United States of America will get sick of giving 70 billion a year to Israel to support its, what I call America's aircraft carrier in the Middle East, that is Israel. One day the US people are going to say to the Israel lobby in the USA, enough is enough. Read that book by Walton Mearsheimer called The Israel Lobby. It's rubbish. Find out about it. Of course it's rubbish. It's you would say that, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you I'm going to critique it, it's rubbish. But it will not go critique. on forever. It will not go on forever. Israel will lose its support and then they will reap what they have sowed. Okay, I'd just like to point out what this gentleman said, which is I've written a critique of it. It's rubbish. Your critique is rubbish, thank you. Um, Read my uh, critique. Ken. Yeah. Just, just for it. Okay, I'm glad to hear in response to your question, brother. Quiet. In response to your question, uh, as far as I'm concerned, and this is my opinion, it is ultimately up to the Palestinian people to decide. There's no question of that. But my opinion is this. The two-state, so-called two-state solution is the second um, national. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Ken. There's some, quite a lot of noise coming from this portion of the room. Why? Why? People are fed up and angry with this we are, We're here to li listen to, uh, to Ken right now, and uh, I'd like you to listen to him. Thank Ken you. Ken and the two-state solution is supported by by all of the people, all the all the characters that we've been entrusting the so-called peace process to. Every last one of them, from Tony Blair to every U.S. president, has all supported this. The two-state solution will lay in concrete a reward for Israel's ethnic cleansing, for its oppression, and ultimately it will create this little mini-state of Palestine that will be economically inferior, militarily insignificant and ultimately one rocket attack away from Israel pummeling it over and over again. It's the ultimate disaster as far as I'm concerned. The only solution for Palestine, in my opinion, is the only solution for this world. 
that we look at each other as brothers and sisters, we treat each other as such, and that the basis of our society must be every single person has human rights. Those rights cannot be violated. Don't you insult me by telling me you need to take away some of my rights to provide security. I want to use a strong word for that con game. That is a lie. Every single person's rights must be respected. That would be the end of Israel as we know it, and that's why they will do everything they can to stop it. Okay, thank you very much, Ken. Um, I understand that there's a lot of people who, who, who do want to speak. Unfortunately, I've only got a chance for one more contribution from the floor. And then, uh, there's one thing. If I am a shill, I'm on your side. Why are you being so mean to me? I'm on your side. Come on. Come on. I'm not helping you. Come on. You care about Palestine so much. Come on. You're coming. You're actually a Palestinian. You're so. Okay. Okay. Right. What I want to add to that is that we, the powerful countries in the world, should insist that every country in the world obeys international law. Because at the moment we are total hypocrites. We allow international law to be broken with impunity by our so-called friends like Israel, and yet we come down hard on little African di dictators and take them off to the International Criminal Court. If we respected human rights and made every country in the world obey international law, regardless of our own self-interest, the world would be a much, much better place. You know, in this time, Telling the truth is a revolutionary act. Let me tell another one here, as the Israeli shill that I am. Israel and Mossad were directly involved in 9-11. The proof of that is absolute. Israel, Israel continues to spy on America and Britain and continues to foster false flag terrorism. False flag terrorism. I'll go back to Gaza and I will go back to Palestine when it's free. I will go back because there will be justice in Palestine. How many times would you like me to go? Go back to Gaza. Will you be allowed into Gaza? Okay, this is a discussion. I have an open invitation back to Gaza. The Zio book website that you talk about is frequented by a bunch of nutcases. Okay, the people okay. of Palestine, the people of so Palestine soon, can soon. see the Why truth the and they know the Zionist game. Why is the Why is the okay. Why okay. Is okay. The can I ask you to round, round up in, in general so, and not, not in case? Rather than, rather than, rather than, rather than have it all game. about Rather than, this, back, is, this is the objective. Is, is this, Ken, is this you what you can't go can oh, I can't go How was Israel responding? Okay, the two know. gentlemen in here, we've heard it all before. Yeah. I would like Ken to be heard in silence, and then we're going to hear from uh, Dr. Uh, you uh, know, Dr. Garda, and then the, uh, the event yeah, this, ends, okay? this is the most perfect example of the Orwellian yeah, world we live in. We now, the have, we now have the Zionists. We I'm now have, we now have the Okay, right. Ken will be heard in silence, or you both will leave. But I'm not a Zionist. He's you will both leave or hear Ken in silence. This guy's. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we leave you both alone? Do you want us to retire a moment alone? Yeah, yeah. 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 it deserves There some seems to be something special going on here. It's very beautiful. Tell us about 9 11, Ken. Okay, Ken, if you could just wrap up and then. The dancing Israelis who were there to film the event, the explosives found in the Mossad agents' vehicles that were heading. Towards, heading towards New York City, the Israeli agents who admitted on television, and all of the in, all of the evidence. I could sit here for hours, and I wish I could. It is there, and the world knows it. The world knows it, and your false flag operations are not only going to take you so far because the world can see it. The bottom line is this: the reason why the reason why a person like me gets attacked and slandered is because the things that I'm doing have some benefit. And for that I feel blessed. And even if, even if, even if I wasn't appreciated, it doesn't matter because you know what, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, Palestine will be free. Mark my words, Palestine will be free. Regardless of me, it will be free. Thank you very much, Ken. Let me go straight on to our last words from, uh, from hey, To this gentleman, I really have to tell you, that is the lowest, lowest form of diversion that I have seen for many years. 9-11! 9-11!
and the, I, and the idea, and the idea that would you allow me to speak? Okay, we're going to hear from Dr. Gardy, and that's that. It, no, I'm not going to hear from you. I'm not entering into debate with you. You will shut up. I just want to. I want, I want to make this point because it's important. This is the only thing these people can do. Yes. They try to uh, smear the messenger without want so that they want you never to hear the message. What a pity that these um, supporters of Israel didn't pause for a moment to listen to what was being said, to the information they were receiving, rather than try in a very, may I say, very low way to cast aspersions on the character of the person speaking. It makes, it does not help you. It really doesn't help you. And I think it's been quite a valuable lesson, isn't it, for the rest of this room, because, and I want to address this to our friends, uh, it shows you why we have a problem with Israel. Because Israel has no case whatever. And the people who support it do it in these sorts of ways because they know that Israel has no case. So they have to, they resort to insult, to interrupting meetings, to being really behaving in a quite a disgusting way. It's the only thing they've got left. I think it's pathetic. And and it really won't make any difference. That's the saddest part of all this. It won't make any difference. The truth remains the truth. The people who recognize the truth will support the Palestinians. And the people who know that liars are liars and the people who support them are liars. And uh, it, will make, it will make no difference. So I just want to say thank you so much for coming and for spending time listening to the problems that we face with, with Israel and let us hope that we can work together to put an end to the violations of this gangster state.